How long should you leave your trades open in the market? Let's talk about that and more right now. Hello Forex traders, it's Andrew Mitchum here, the Forex Trading Coach. Today this is video and podcast number 208 and it's the last video and podcast for the year of 2016 and what an amazingly quick year it has been but more about that shortly. So the subject of today and it comes about as a result of an email I had from a follower of mine on Forex Peace Army, a guy called Ray and Ray said, Andrew I love your podcast, can you do one about the possibility of an overnight gap jumping right past your stop loss. Um, what's the possibility of a flash crash while you were sleeping? How do you deal with that? Is Forex more immune to this than other markets? And Ray goes on to say that he used to trade futures where gaps were always a possibility. So how do I trade the longer time frame charts? So the great news is, Ray, is that the Forex market doesn't really have gaps, being a 24 hour market from its open to its close, you don't really get gaps. You can occasionally get a gap from a mar the market closing at the end of the week until the beginning of the next week, and that can sometimes happen. It generally doesn't become an issue for most people the way that they trade. Uh, if you're trading the longer time frame charts, then the gaps generally, if you leave your trades open over the weekend, don't become too big of an issue. If you're trading shorter time frame charts, so for me anything from a daily chart and lower, I always close them at the end of the week or before the end of the week anyway. So if we get a gap open uh, at the beginning of the next week, it's not really a big deal. And what you're referring to, Ray, being a, a futures trader or a previous futures trader, is that you get gaps uh, obviously between um, the market opening and the market closing uh, on uh, most of those other markets. You look at commodities, etc. Most Forex brokers now offer far more uh, options available to us, different markets than just the currency markets like they used to. So you can trade things like, you know, sort of. Uh, coffee and soy and, and different uh, markets as well on most forex brokers. Uh, and when you look at those, they are largely dependent around the market times that they open and close, and they're certainly not 24 hour markets, most of them, and most of them are dependent on the US. So if you're not in the US, then they become really difficult markets to trade. So for me over here in New Zealand, most of those US markets open somewhere between about two and four o'clock in the morning. And I certainly don't want to be up at looking at charts at that time of the day, but you do get gaps on those markets. So even in the Forex market, when you get new News announcements and they become, you know, and the, the announcements massively better or worse than expected, and you get some decent price action. Very rarely do you actually get gaps in the market. So, Ray, to answer your question, uh, to leave your trades in when you say overnight, it depends again where you live in the world. But if you're talking between the close of the uh, day, which is uh, 4:59 p.m. New York time, and leaving it open through to uh, the next day, 5 p.m. New York time and into the next day on the Forex charts, then most times it's not generally an issue and that's one of the great things. If you are still concerned about it, then of course you can go and you can sort of day trade, scalp trade and, and that's absolutely fine and it works extremely well. It just depends on what suits you. If you're the sort of person that wants to be in and out of a trade all the time within a few minutes or a few hours, then I suggest you go down to shorter time frame charts. But like honestly, uh, I've been trading Forex for 13 years and I've never really had, apart from maybe one or two occasions where you see an unexpected gap. Very, very rare do you get that. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we're at the end of 2016. Uh, it's been a fantastic year. I've uh, helped heaps of traders around the world, had a really good year myself. My daily trade suggestions that I post to my members on the membership site, if you did nothing else and just followed those for this year, only half of 1% risk for the uh, for each trade, you'd be up over 35% on your account. That's without even compounding. And now you add on top of that the trades that I post on weekly and monthly charts, uh, trades that I take on my live webinars, uh, trades that I post and other clients post on my forum site, plus of course trades that people take themselves, you can see what an exceptional year we've had. In fact, I've just received another email this morning from a client uh, called Paul who joined me in June and Paul said that he's had a 27% return on his live account since June with only a 3% drawdown. So it's exceptional 
exceptional trading. And that's just taking a few of my trades plus his own trades, but the 27% um, account gain, and he's only joined me in June. So I don't know when uh, Paul started trading, it may have been right at the beginning or it may have taken a few weeks first, but either way, that's an exceptional return with only a 3% drawdown. You know, it's all well and good saying I've made a, you know, a 200% return. That's great, but not much good if you've had a 50% drawdown at the same time. So statistics are really important to actually analyze them further than, than just look at the, the performance result and go, wow, that's either really good or really bad. You have to look further into it and see uh, you know, what drawdowns were, what risk per trades were, and all those sort of things to give yourself a bigger perspective picture on that. But the thing you can do at the end of the year, go and review your trades. Go and have a really good look through the trades that you took, the ones that were profitable, the ones that were not, and try and analyze why the good ones were, you know, were good. Why did they work? Why did the losing trades lose? Is there anything you could have done differently? You know, have a look through that and analyze the, the markets. Go back through your charts, analyze the, your account history, and, and really take some time over the next few weeks while the markets are pretty pretty sort of uh, quiet time really. I'm stopping trading today being the 16th of December. I'm not even looking at charts or starting until Monday the 9th of January. So if you do follow my uh, posts, uh, the freely available posts on my website or Forest Peace Army or Twitter or eToro, wherever you see them, um, they won't be starting again until Monday the 9th of January. There's just uh, no point in trading when the market's that sort of um, potentially either very volatile or very quiet. Just We don't know, of course, in advance which it's going to be, but I prefer to have a decent break and then start again when the majority of the market's all back in action 9th of January onwards. So that's it for me this year. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for listening to my podcast. I hope you really enjoyed them. I hope you learned a lot. Um, the people who have joined my Christmas sale this year, the fantastic feedback already from people who have joined this week. If you missed that, um, well, there's been plenty of opportunity to jump on um, and you'll have to wait till next Christmas. But you know, there's, there's been plenty of opportunity for people to join. Uh, if you need any trading help, just send me an email, andrew at theforextradingcoach.com. Uh, replies may take a little bit longer over the next few weeks because I also want to enjoy Christmas and do plenty of flying and family things and barbecues and beaches. Don't forget, it's summer this side of the world at Christmas time. So that's it for me. Have a great uh, Christmas, great new year. Uh, happy, safe, prosperous 2017. I'll see you in January. Bye for now.